Okay, Chapter 5, Pearson, Electronic Structures and Periodic Table, Electronic Radiation, New Concept, Atomic Spectra, Energy Levels, Sub-Levels and Orbitals, Orbital Diagrams, Electronic Configuration, Electronic Configuration and Periodic Table, Trends, a lot of stuff to cover here. And most of it's going to be, we're going to show you the concepts, and I'm going to try to sh teach it to you from, uh, from the periodic table, so you might want to have your periodic table, you know, somewhere hand in your book, because, again, it cuts down on the amount of overall memorization. All right, so most of the things that I'm going to teach you, I'm going to show you the process. Hopefully, that's so you won't have to memorize it much, but if you want to memorize it all, that's going to be completely up to you. So let's get going. All types of electromagnetic radiation, including light, consists of particles that move in a w as waves of energy. Part en this energy moves as a wave, like dolphins, and they're pretty much like dolphins, but they also move as particles. Each dolphin takes it. But if you look at the whole trail of dolphins or whales, what happens? You see in a wave fashion when they're up and out of it. So each, so that's how it moves. Now, if you've seen uh, the movies uh, Galaxy something, somebody of the galaxies, what's the thing? Saves Guardians. The ga Guardians. Yeah, there you go. Guardian. If you've seen Guardians of the Galaxy where they shoot the, the ga guns, those are photon guns, and it just comes straight at you. Well, really, you didn't see it, but it moves in a wave like this and hits you. You get it? Okay, so these are bursts, okay? And that's how they move. So that's something you need to know. Now, when light moves like that, it has a couple of options. It can move with very long waves or very short waves, okay? Now, imagine if you're on the beach, right? Here it is, you're on the beach, and you're standing here. If this wave hits you, right? That's, you get it? Or you have a choice of what? This wave and part of this one hitting you, which one you think is going to have the most impact? The more waves hit you, the more you, you can't get back to shore. You follow? So longer wavelength is lower energy. You get it? When you have shorter wavelength, it's higher energy. It is that straightforward. And you can see the concept. These waves are passing through a fixed point. At this fixed point, you have more of them hitting you. Because each time one of them hits, that's the photon and guardians of the galaxy. You get it? You're getting hit. So here you're getting hit uh, twice. Here you're only getting hit once. Okay? And that's what's happening. So higher frequency. So sh shorter wavelengths are higher frequency. Long wavelengths are lower frequency. Higher frequency tend to be more biologically damaging. So, shorter, so higher frequency, shorter wavelengths are more biological damaging to us. And you're going to see where it's examples of that, and you've probably already guessed it, x-rays, right, and things of that nature. That's why we put on, the, put on the capes. So this is what light looks like if we split it out. This is really showing you the light. We can see the visible light between 400 and 700 approximately. You'll see the exact numbers. All right? Now, this is what we just told you. The distance between hilltop to hilltop, okay, distance between each successive peak is a wavelength. Notice here, and these are what? Shorter wavelengths. Does everyone see that? Or you can go valley to valley. And these are shorter. We have more of them between there. And so the wavelengths, the distance, and the frequency is a number of waves passing through a fixed point. So that number, you get more waves through it, more impact, more shots from the photon cannon. Uh, the wavelengths of frequency electromagnetic are related by, by nu, which is frequency equals the speed of light divided by lambda of the wavelength. And speed of light is fixed, there is, therefore it is a, this is a conversion factor that you can use. This is a formula <laughs> that we allow you to memorize and use without dimensional analysis. We'll be, you guys are supposed to be excited when I said that. Come on. <laughs> but, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> but you can also do all of these problems by dimensional analysis. You get it? All the scientific problems we solve can be done by dimensional analysis. But we allow you to have density and, uh, uh, and frequency by, by memorization. Okay? So this is a formula for it, and we can do those relationships. C equals, so we see here, you can rearrange it, speed of light, etc. Okay, if you have trouble rearranging these, see a math center, or if you ask me, I'll show you a quick way to, to rearrange any formula in the world, and you'll never forget it. It's pretty straightforward, just so no one likes to show you it to you, but I will. And this shows you, again, the formulas that we use here, so you are allowed to use this formula. 
things. So, all right, there we have it. So this is what we do, so we can use it. So this is a formula. Now, this is what's important about it. Where does life exist? You want to know between four, 700 and 400 nanometers. By the way, you'll occasionally hear me say this in reverse order because I actually teach a course where the, where the slides for this, the author chose to do it the other way. Okay? So, everybody likes to draw the graphics differently. So, 700 and 400, are, that's visible light. And that's important to know. I do expect you to know that. This is where we are. This is why we see the different colors. Okay? All right? So this is where we get to enjoy the beauty. To the left and to the right, we don't get to visually see anything, and we call it white when it gets here. Okay? So we don't see it. Here's important to know. Notice here, these are shorter or longer wavelengths. Longer, right? Mm -hmm. just, 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 just visual. It's all visual. Okay? These are what? Shorter. Which ones do we say are most damaging? Shorter, Shorter. Shorter right. Because visible light, for the most part, this is where we live. And we'll, we'll talk about some of the damaging rays here, but this is where we live. So we're going to have some damage. That's life. You get it? This is where we live. But here, these wavelengths are, for the most part, for biological species, we consider it to be harmless. Notice here where the microwaves are for all of you who fear microwaves and saw those infomercials that pop the popcorn with the cell phone. <laughs> Please. <laughs> okay. That does not happen. For those who are afraid that their cell phone is going to cook their brain if it's left in the bed with them. Well, my brain's already cooked, so it doesn't matter, okay? <laughs> you know, a little more damage, hey, what? <laughs> it doesn't matter. These are not biologically harmful. You get it? You now know that, okay? If you're still afraid of them, that's your business, you got it? But by science, there is no credible scientific. Infrared, this is basically heat. This is what's warming the earth. It's important to us. This is less harmful than what's warming the earth. You get it? And this, this is Grandpa sitting there with that dial trying to get a station, right? Trying to get his radio going back and forth. And these are microwaves. But these are the ones that are harmful. What do we know? Ultraviolet. Now, this ultraviolet is different than the ultraviolet that's used in the nightclubs and in the beauty salon. The nightclub and beauty salon uh, UV is right on the edge of visible. Okay? That's why you can sit there and do your feet and not put on glasses and things. Okay? So it's right on the edge of visible. It's not really, it's not strong UV. But you go further over, now we're getting a higher level UV radiation. And over here, x rays, which you guys know better than I do about. Okay? This is x ray. This is why you put on the, the dentist, puts on the, on the vest. Because these are harmful rays, and they're getting a higher exposure all day long doing this. Right? Okay? And they always ask you if you're pregnant, make sure you tell them those kinds of things. Because these gamma rays, this is Incredible Hulk. Okay? Yeah, this is the real deal. You get it? I expect you to have some idea about this. Okay? Does everyone follow? I am not going to ask you to memorize. Well, essentially, you've probably got it memorized by now, but you get it? I'd ask you, television, you know, which side or something of that nature, you get it? Which one's the most harmful, damaging that? That's what we'd ask you. So you get it? So this side, for the most part, aren't damaging to biologicals. There may be some exceptions to that, okay? But for the most part, we don't worry about microwaves. And the microwaves that microwave your popcorn do not stay in the popcorn. There's no transfer of microwave to it. The way microwaves work, they basically, molecules either rotate, stretch, or break. Rotate, stretch, bend, or break. In the microwave, the water molecules are excited and they start to rotate, and they rotate, and they rotate, and they're like little marbles, and they start to hit each other, and what happens? Friction. And that heat is transferred to your bread or to the soup. Okay? You get it? It's not like some dangerous radiation that hits it and it's not cure cancer radiation. It's not that type of thing. Is everyone following? Important for you to know. 
Okay, now that we've dispelled that myth, let's move on. So here we just show you again, energy increases. We've already told you that. You, you now know that. Here we show you an example of, of biological reaction to UV light. It's a type of depression called uh, se seasonal affective disorder. People experience mood swings and depression during the winter. That's just it. So they treat you with the, with the, with the light. One treatment is SAD is therapy using bright light provided by lamps called a, a light box. You guys may know more than, yeah. So I live in Alaska where the light, we only have minimal light every day, and that's like one of the big things they that's, have, you have to have one of those in your house. Yeah, you've been there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly, and this is why. So you get, it's, it's really kind of helped your, your body chemistry to readjust re, re itself, okay? And so it's helpful, and that's what we mean when you look at that. This is that helpful part. There's helpful radiation that doesn't destroy anything. It just simply resets it. Very good. Good. Thanks for sharing that. But yeah, but that's what we use. So this is an example of why we use it, okay? Here's an example where it can be damaging. And we expect you to be familiar with this. This, this slide would be on an exam. It's this slide, this exact slide would be on your exam. Okay, I'd ask you every question on here. So what we have is we have this radiation. We have UVA, UVB, and UVC. UVC is completely blocked by ozone and oxygen. Ozone and oxygen, okay, in the stratosphere. We live in a trophosphere, okay? Above a trophosphere, about a little over 11 miles up, uh, 11 kilometers for sure up, uh, starts the stratosphere, which is where ozone, the ozone layer is. And that completely blocks UVC. So if someone tries to sell you sunscreen for blocking UVC, <laughs> laugh at them. Okay? The ozone's already taken care of that. Okay, I saw one of those infomercials, by the way. I said, wow. And so they said, the one thing no one's selling you is protection against UVC. I said, man, why didn't I think of that scam? I mean, that creative idea. <laughs> but here's what we're concerned with, UVA and UVB. Okay? UVB is partially blocked, okay, in the ozone. But it gets through and it hits our skin, and this is what causes <laughs> skin cancer. Okay? It's here. Okay? Sometimes they call skin cancer, but you get peeling, you get de degrading. This is also very similar to what's happening in this tannic salons, a little bit lower energy. Okay, here you get the you get the you get the brown color. That's melanin. You're reducing the brown. The brown will be really is kind of a yellow color. It comes to our eyes as brown. Then we have UVA. It goes all the way through. This is a damage that we don't find out about. Here we kind of start to feel a little bit. Here, th this comes back to see us later. So be aware of that. That UVA and UVB are the ones that we're concerned with in terms of skin. And we go back to our chart. Okay. It's over here. Okay. It's where, we, where we're concerned. Uh, a is closer here, B, C, and I may have a chart with the numbers on it. Okay. Um, here, this shows you that there's a difference in terms of skin damage depending on your ethnicity. Wow. You know here, black males and black females tend to naturally have protection here. White females suffer more, and white males more. So, so if you're so if you're dating a white male, right, and you really care about them, ah, don't buy them another cell phone or take them on a trip anywhere. Get them some sunscreen. That's love. <laughs> okay, right? Yeah, you don't want a new car or anything. Yeah. None of that stuff. Sunscreen is the way to go. All right, you get it. This is just biology. Okay? Be aware of that. I expect you to be familiar with that. Those trends. When white light from the sun or bulb passes through a prism, it's broken into the, the colors. And that's what you've already seen. Okay? A lot of this is memorization stuff and familiarization with it. Before we do our exam, we will go through each slide and tell you what to expect. Okay? Photons. This is what we were talking about earlier. Guardians of the Galaxy, the little light coming out and hitting you. These are photons. Those are bursts of energy. The light emitted, okay, and stream of particles known as photons. But how are those photons going? They're going like this, not 
straight. Okay? They're going on a wave. Low energy wave is like that. The high energy wave is like this. Okay? That's how it travels. All right? Photons are a little bit like if you have a refrigerator, you hit the water button and all the water streams out. But if you hit the ice cube, they come out of clumps of ice cubes. Those are called quantized units of energy. Do I have that on the next slide? Maybe I don't. That's called quantized energy. Quantized energy is like the specific IP address of your phone. Okay? It's at that frequency. It's not in between, like Grandpa dialing his, his radio in, or like the old analog television with what they call the rabbit ears or the antennas, analog antennas, where you had to adjust them until you found it just right and you never got a really good signal. Okay? This is very specific. You're either at that IP address, at that energy, or you're not. Okay? That's how energy is. It's burst energy. That's why they can dial your cell phones like they do and these types of things. And that's why they can do cancer treatments because everything's very specific. Okay? Uh, this is an example. In a hospital, high energy photons are used to treatment of tumors without damage around the tissue. You get it? Very specific, it goes right to that spot. You think of you'll, you, you hear them talk about laser, you'll hear the term that you use a lot of laser treatment. Sometimes it's not quite what we would, cause, we would call a laser, but it's this photon energy that they're beaming it, okay? And they call that laser. Everything's got a generically laser, but really that's what you're doing. You, that photon's going specifically to that spot. That's why it doesn't damage the surrounding tissue. The frequency is set there, it matches there. It either just, it, disrupts or does something to that specific location. And that's kind of cool. And that's all because of quantized energy, all because someone was smart enough to figure this out and know that these are at specific frequencies. You get it? Okay. The atomic structure, when light emits from heated elements and passes through a prism, it does not produce a continuous spectrum. And that's just basically saying it splits you get, the, you get the splitting. Heated elements produce atomic spectra, which consists of different colors separated by dark uh, areas. So basically, it's telling you you can see the colors, okay, when it goes through there. That's what happens. Only certain uh, wavelengths of light are produced by those heated elements. And in laboratories, and I don't know that we do that here, but in laboratories, you would take different metals and you would heat them and you'll see different color flames. Those are, that's what this is talking about. It emits a certain detectable color to your eye. Your eyes are actually the French telling a frequency. And you measure it by color. Your cell phone measures by that specific digit. Okay, to the right number of safe bigs, in fact. <laughs> okay, all right. That's what this is showing you. That you can split it out, okay and see only one color. This part is informational. This is now where we start to move toward the periodic table use of this. Each electron has a specific energy level. Each electron, right? And we know where electrons, for neutral atoms, on the, which are on the periodic table, we know the electrons equal the number of what? Protons. So on your periodic table, for example, we have carbon uh, that looks like 6. So carbon 6, right? So that's 6. Therefore, it has, what, six, elect six protons, right? That's its atomic number. And it has, what, 6 electrons. So this is what it's talking about now, okay? So each of these has a specific energy level. Each electron has a specific energy level. And we're going to start to teach you those, that energy level. That energy level, you can think about it as like an IP address or like more like a map address, okay? Like a map app address, okay? And we're going to show you in the periodic table. And I really suggest that you memorize it from the periodic table and try to memorize these digits because they'll fail you sometimes. I'm going to show you on the periodic table how all of this is organized, okay? And we're going to walk through it in, some, in a couple of work sessions. But the principal quantum numbers, these are what we call the quantum numbers. And now, quantum is the same thing when we say quantized, meaning very specific energy, okay? Like the ice cubes, that's quantized. Those bursts from the photon cannons in the movies, 
Those are specific, they are quantized. So it simply, simply means that it's very specific, it's at that exact frequency. So everyone follow that. So here we show its quantized numbers of one, less than two, less than three, less than four, less than five. These are, and we're gonna show you what all this means, okay? You're gonna work through it. Electrons in lower energy levels are closer to the nucleus. In other words, in lower levels, on the periodic tables, I know you haven't memorized, we talked about it last week, so certainly haven't memorized, right? This is level one, level two, level three, level four, level five, and six, level seven. Oh, I counted wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Does everyone follow? Okay. These are your energy levels, and you simply count them. Don't memorize it. Look at the periodic table. You'll always have one. You count them, level one through seven. Okay? That's what we're showing you. Here, it, things up to the top of the periodic table, okay, the electrons are closer to the nucleus. Why? You don't have as many rings. Remember the example we used the stadium at Michigan Stadium? The golf ball in the center of Michigan Stadium, that's your nucleus. The first row of bleachers, that's your first one, so it's closer to the golf ball, closer to the nucleus. The nosebleed is way out there, higher up here. And Michigan seats 110,000. It's a lot of electrons. Electrons can only have certain energy values, important to note. We therefore say that these energies are quantized, that exact value. Okay? And this is the definition you need to memorize. Energy levels increase, it's energy of the values in increase. So that's how it works. More energy. Not to worry, we'll walk, we're going to work through this at a work session. When electrons change from a lower to a higher energy, they absorb the energy equal to the change. So it's going to go from here, okay, to here. It's going to, this is energy in between here and here. Do you follow that? There's always there's energy between it. So everyone follow. There's always energy between there. So you go from here, it's like going upstairs. It requires energy. You get it? So you're going to absorb some energy, and your potential energy is now higher because you're up, you're up higher. So you're going to go from this low, lower potential energy area to a higher one by absorbing the energy between these levels, and it's going to be here. And then it's eventually going to drop back down, and when it does, it's going to emit that energy, and this, you're going to get some event. You're going to get some, some light, you're going to get light, some glowing. Something's going to happen. It transmits light. When photons, when you... <laughs> When the electrons go from higher energy, okay, down, okay, we get the photons are emitted, okay, and we see it as light. That's why you see light. When the electrons change to higher or lower energy, they emit energy equal to the change. So whatever that is. So this is a higher energy event, right? So look at it. Which of these events, this event or this event, would be more biologically damaging? First one or the second? One? You guys got it. That's what we're trying to get you to see. The whole point of what we've been talking about is what you just said. To understand the difference in those energies. Okay? All right? That's what we're trying to get you to see. That's what happens in these walls. It hits it, it excites it, and it smiles. It emits the light. That's what's happening in these. In the old incandescent bulbs, it just simply we couldn't electrons can't get through, and it just got hot, and they glow, and it just glowed because it was a path, it was a hard path to get through, and they used a hard path to glow the metal, and you get the light bulb. But this is different. It hits it, moves up to a higher energy level, and it lets the photons go. But this is more like this than like this, right? Because this is more damaging. So it's short, it's long wave. It's all long wave. That's why we can sit in here and enjoy it. So for people who are concerned about microwaves and things in nature, you're saying, heck, I'm sitting up here with a fluorescent light. Okay? You get it? That's, you get it? The shorter wavelength, they're my microwave. I think I'll be okay. <laughs> Does everyone get it? It's all energy. It's all science. All right. Chemistry link here. Okay, we're going to turn on the switch. I'm not going to... And I'm going to reiterate that. Here is what we're going to do. We're going to practice doing this at, when we finish the lecture part. We're going to pause and we're going to practice doing these, this part right here. 
Energy levels are assigned. One, two, three. Increase the energy values, increase. They have, they can put electrons in there. So, does everyone have a periodic table? Or if we can see, can you guys, I don't know if you guys can see this one or not. Can you see this one on the wall? It's hard, isn't it? I'm going to try to get them to change. I'm going to try to get another one put in here for you guys, okay? It's, a bit un, it's not working. I'm going to try to get it there. If they don't do it, I'm going to do it myself. I apologize later, right? <laughs> but, let's see. Um, you're going to need a, oh, shucks. I don't have a good periodic table in here. Let's see if we have one. Let's see if I can get to, get to one in here. I want to be able to talk together, though, with you, okay? Because this is the important part. Let me just move to I think I have one. In, yeah, there it is. In is here. This is harder to see, but let's just talk about it, okay? This is at the end here. Let's just talk about this periodic table. This is level one. Oh, we have a label here, don't we, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is what we're talking about. And we're talking about each of these elements, each of these squares has so many electrons located there. That's just where they park. Does everyone follow? Okay. And so if I look at where they are, I can tell you by reading this periodic table what they are. Not memorizing it, simply by counting. And the most you're going to have to count to is 10. Okay, so I think we can all handle that, right? Here's what we have. Energy level 1 through 7. Does everyone understand that, right? These are rows. So that's straightforward. It's like I'm reading a map. Uh, this zone, this area of periodic table is called the S. And that's it. This is called P, this is called D, and this is called F. That's the location. That's not magic. That's not any brilliance. That's just the way it's organized. It was brilliant to figure it out, of course, but now it's organized for us. We have the answer. Each of these blocks represents, for all practical purposes, a, a, a compartment or, an, or a folder for an electron. Does so everyone follow that? You with me so far? So each block you see represents a folder or compartment and energy level for electrons. So if I look here, Tell me, watch how you do it yourself. What energy level am I at if I look at lithium? Two. two. So that's the first thing you write. You tell me two. You would write that on you, right? Which location of the periodic table am I in? S. So I write two S. With me so far? Does everyone see that? At which block am I in along this row counted from left to right? One. One. So I would write two, for lithium I would write, the last thing I'll write about lithium is this 2S1. Everyone follow that? And we're, you're going to do that over and over again by looking at the periodic table. I am not going to be forcing you to memorize that because I'm going to give you the periodic table and you're going to know this is S, P, D, F. Now let's test ourselves and see if we got it. Let's go right here, fop. let's go to... Silicon. See where I am with silicon? First, I'd ask you, how many, how, what's the atomic number? Can you guys see it? 14. 14. So that tells you how many protons? 14. How many electrons? 14. Very good. With me so far? What we're telling you about is the last location of them. Then we're going to count back and show you the rest of them, okay? So everyone follow. So, which energy level is silicon? Three. Three. Which location? P. So it's 3P. Which counting from, from starting at the P's, which location in P's? Two. Two. You get it? The last thing we would say about it is it's 3P2. So if you said someone, I'm working with this element and it's located in 3P2, I know exactly what you're talking about. You're talking about silicon. You get it? Does everyone follow so far? The two represents the number of the last set of electrons that went into it, where two of them that went into it. But watch this. You ready to go? Before that, I had already filled up this one to get there, right? On my merry way. And before that, I had already filled up what? The S, 
right? I fill up the S, and before that, I filled up this, the first level, the P's over here, and the S over here. Before that, I filled up the first level with those. The first level is always S. There's no P for S by, for the first level, by the way. Okay? That's what we're talking about, those locations. Sounds a little strange right now, but we're going to show you how to use that. Okay? So each, what I just showed you was the equivalent of what you would think of an IP address of all of these. Okay? You're going to hear a term later called the valence electrons. You now know what that is when you hear it. Okay? So does everyone follow what I just did? Now we're going to show you how to do it. And that's what all this stuff is that we just went through back and over. Now that you see where these numbers come from, don't you? You know how to read this. Okay, energy level 2, and this has got to be 1. Don't worry about the 1s yet. You'll get that. This is level 1. Okay, you get it? We'll show you all of that. It's showing you how many electrons you can have, maximum electrons you can have. I rarely ask this level of chemistry this information. As long as you can show me how to count the electrons, okay, I'm usually happy. We're going to show you how to count them. This is what I just showed you about. You know, the S. You notice on the periodic table, if you go to the P, we can have as many as six. And it's always double. The S, so you see, so you have two here, two, 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 six. So everyone follow this so far? Each one of those blocks, each, you get it? Because there's six on the periodic six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You get it? In the P. In the D, there's ten if you count them across, which means you can put two. So it's simple math, right? Two means five. Here's 14, so you need seven. Folders. Does everyone follow? This is showing you the number of electrons, energy level four, energy level three. In this class, we're not going to go past four. On purpose. Five gets five and six get and seven. They get a little hairy when you get up five, six, seven. There are a few exceptions. Okay. We're only going to go to level four. So we go one, one two, three, four. So we'll go down only to down to the row where potassium is on, right? And bromine and all of those. Okay. Does everyone follow? I'm going to show you some examples past that. But you're only going to be tested up to four. Okay. Is everybody kind of with me? It'll make sense later. So here's what you just discovered. That S is lowest energy, P is next, D is next, and F is the highest energy level. And you now know that if I look at the periodic table. S, P, D, F, in terms of energy. I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. But before we show you that, I want to show you, this is a picture of what the orbitals look like. Okay. So this is what orbitals look like here. They have dimensionality. They're 3D. You're 3D. Therefore, you intuitively know this. The plants are 3D. We're composed of these atoms. You get it? So we have what? The three dimensions. Here we show you by X, Y, and Z. That's what this energy looks like. That's what these electrons look like. This is why you're, you look like you look. We show you here that a 1S is smaller than a 2S is smaller than a 3S. You kind of intuitively know that, right? Because you now know in the periodic table what? There are more rings. It goes larger as we go down. So the one S, right, and we're only working the S block now, right, is smaller than the two S, is smaller than the three S. I mean, the four is larger, and you keep going. So everyone kind of follow that somewhat. With me so far? Hang in there. P looks like this: X, Y, and Z. And we put it together. We're able to get to four, six electrons. Okay? Here, S can only hold two. They can only, an orbit, it can only hold two, no more than two. So we can put two in here. Then we put, so we get three of these, we can put two, four, six. Just two, four, six. You get it? One, one set of dumbbells is one orbital. Okay? Two electrons will go in here, two will go in here, two will go in here. We can get a maximum of six. If you look at this, the six, at the P block, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So I know I'm right. I won't. If I forget, I simply look at the periodic table and count. Uh, let's see. We have what next? What is this? D. Yeah, D. 
get the D now, we can have more orbitals, 2, 4, 6, 8, whatever, 10, we can get in, in here. So we get a little bit, 2, 4, 6, 8, yeah, 10. D has more, okay? I am not asking you to memorize these. I'll tell you which ones I expect you to know the pictures of. I certainly want you to know the picture of an S orbital is a sphere, and a P orbital is a dumbbell. I did not say dummy, I said dumbbell. There's a difference in the two, okay? Is everybody with us? And this is what you now know how to do, and we're going to do it with you. Does everyone see now where this S comes from? Kind of. Everybody know where this 4 comes from? Right? You count the periodic table. 1, 2, 3, 4. The P, that means this is in the P block of the periodic table. Which block is this in? Very good. What block is this in? Which energy level? 4. Okay? Take a look here. This is just showing you subdivisions. We won't do the subdivisions in this. Okay. This Pauli exclusion principle says that when you put electrons into an orbital, how many can go to a single into a single orbital? The answer is always two. So if you want to get six, you, you need six electrons, you've got to use the P orbitals. Does everyone follow that? If you want to just simply use two, then the S orbital. Okay. You need ten. You go to the D orbital, you need 14, you go to the F, F orbital. Okay, let us show you how to do that. But what Pauli says is that they don't like to go in the same way. One likes to go in, one down. Okay? You never draw the electrons pointing the same way. They hate it. Okay? Pauli says you're going to have one pointing up and one electron pointing down. Okay? Does everyone follow that? So keep that in mind. It'll make sense when we do it. Okay? So, if I put two electrons, if I look at, look at beryllium on the periodic table, it needs two electrons. Why do I know it needs two? Because it's one, two. Does everyone see that? I'm just simply counting. I'm not memorizing anything. And I know it's an S. So when I put it in there, I'm going to draw one. So this is my S. There's lot, we can draw this any way you want. Some people draw these. Some draw boxes. Some draw lines. I do either. And I draw one up and one down. You can put double head arrow if you want to. Same thing. I could put this and this. That's filling that location, that folder. This is how we fill the folders, one up, one down. That's it. Okay? All right? First time out, if you draw both arrows up, I'm somewhat forgiving. <laughs> By the final, I'm not forgiving. Got it? Okay? So that's how we draw them. It will make sense to you. This is just their way of showing that, one up, one down. This is their... their picture of it. Orbital diagrams, you now understand it. Do we have what? S, P, D, F. Okay? That's what this is. S, P, D, F. We can put two electrons here, we can put six here, we can put ten here, we can put fourteen here. Okay? So if you have something that has fourteen electrons, you're going to need, you know, okay, or a lot of electrons, you got to keep counting until you get there. We're going to try to do that. So everyone at least get the concepts somewhat, kind of. We place them in. Again, we're going to put in the. We're going to put them in the start at the bottom, and we're going to work our way down. We're going to show you how to do it. This is showing you how we fill these. This is an example. You can tell me what this is. How many? How many electrons are in here? You know, each arrow represents an electron. So we have two here. Count the total now. Six. Which element is this? Carbon. Why'd you say that? Six has yeah atomic number six. So everyone follow what you just did? Right? And we can, now let's look at a periodic table. Let's do it on the periodic table and go to the periodic table, show you how to do it without having to memorize it. Oh, wrong way. Sign zoom in. This is lost in decent. Let's do that. Do carbon. Watch how she just did it. 1s2. So we've got 1, 2. Right? I told you the first one's always s, right? Now I'm at what? 2s, 1, 2. With me so far? I keep going across here. Uh, 2p, 1, 2. You don't want to see that. No. I'm simply counting boxes. You want to count them again? 1s, this is 1, right? I'm going to tell you s is always just 1. 1 is only s. 
you count what? One, two. So you put two electrons in the S. I'm going to show it to you. Now we come down. We're trying to get the carbon. Does everyone follow? You have to walk from the top, weave your way down. You at least get that part. You start here. You're going to weave your way down the periodic table. We'll show it to you. It's a new concept. So go 1s2. Now we're on the second level, 2s. Fill up both of those, 1, 2. Now we jump across here and we have the what? P. You see it there, P. And we're on the second level, 2P, 1, 2. That's what this is. 1s, 2 of them in there. Then we went to 2s and put 2 of them in there. And 2P here because we have 3. We're going to work through these. That's what we're showing you here, and this is how we write it. This is how we draw it. This is how we write it. Okay? This we've already shown you. These are blocks that we've been talking about all morning. I want to show it to you. Hopefully now it'll sink in. 1s1. This is all it has. 1. Then we got 2s, 2p, 3s, 2p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 5s, 4d, 5p, 6s, 5d. Now right here you're going to have, we'll stop here because right here you're going to drop down to, a, to an F and it's in between the, right here. So this is why we're not going to go down there. Okay? So we're not going to do those. You drop here to an F level. So we're only going to get you through here because there are no real major exceptions in this area. Okay? And this is how we drew it, which we're going to practice. Take a look at your periodic table. Everybody look at your periodic table somewhere. Look at beryllium on your periodic table. What's the atomic number? Four. What is it? 34. Beryllium? Beryllium. I was looking at BR, sorry. Four. Four, okay. So look at your periodic table and count blocks across. If you count blocks starting from left to right to top, you count four blocks down. Does everyone see that? That's where you get them two, four. The first one's an S, second's on a two S2. I'm looking at it here. I know you guys can't see this correct here. We'll go to magnesium. How much, what's, what's the uh, atomic number for magnesium? Can you go back one slide? Yes. Mm -hmm. For a second? Sure. No problem. Right here? One more. No, the one that was it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, can you explain to me how the D block is starts at 3 when those are 4 right there? Yeah. Yeah. D blocks, and that's why we're not going to go past it. D block. Okay. You always, it's always minus 1 for D, okay. then minus 2 for F. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's why. And I should have mentioned that to you. Good yeah, catch. Thank you. Yeah, when you get here, it's, all, it's minus 1 on the Ds. Okay. Okay. No, 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 you're absolutely right. Yeah, the Ds drop down minus 1. We want at least exposure to the Ds, but you take minus 1 here, then we get in this area here, and you'll see it on my periodic table at the end. Okay, it gets inserted in here. Okay. All right. So if you can get us down to four here, remember that you have to go minus one on the D. You're going to be fine for this class. We're not going to even go into the S. Because you'd have to remember where they, where they drop in right here. But in my case, you would not show it to you in the correct table. Yeah, good catch. <coughs> Thank you. So here, if we look at magnesium, what's the, what's the atomic number of magnesium? 12. So, we, so that means we've got to have 12 electrons to count for. If you count from the top of your periodic table and count down blocks to there, if you count them, you'll see there should be 12 blocks. Does everyone see that? Everyone counted it? Everyone see 12 blocks? You know what I mean by blocks? I mean squares, uh, elements. So if you count down, that's, what, that's where this that's why this matches. This is where it matches, 12. You get it? So you count these across top, 6, 8, 10, 12. And you look at where they're located. You have to account for each location. Two of them are located in the S. Two of them are located in 2S, which is lithium and beryllium. And then six of them are located in the 6P, which is right here. And then right here, then we have two to get to magnesium. Calcium, what's its periodic? What's its... Uh, what is it? I can't see that far. You said 30? 20. 20. Okay. 
So 20. Um, so you count them, you'll see two in the block there, two there, six, two, six, two. Everyone kind of see it? Can I? So mm -hmm. I'm just trying to, I know, and I've done this before, it's just been so long. So it doesn't matter. We, we don't assume right. where you've been. Right. So for the, okay, so the 1S2, the 1 is the row, is that correct? That's correct. The S is your, like, column section. Okay. And then, so for the 1S2, the 2 are your valence electrons, is that correct? They, yes, no, no. Because valence electrons are only the very last That's electron. Right. They are your electrons. Right. I got you. Okay. They're just, but you count, but each each sec, each location of periodic table represents an electron count. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is what happens. What she's yeah. So this is where you this is where it populates, and you count across, you keep counting, and that's where you end up with the with the with the numbers. That's where these come from. Okay. All right. The number of electrons in the, in that area. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, we're good. Now we're going to show you a concept that's related to that, which is what some of you've been asking about earlier about valence electrons. Okay. That's what these are, and we use valence electrons. Electrons. Valence electrons are the electrons in the last energy level. You got it? Okay. That last IP address. And people draw them different ways. Okay. And there are some helpful ways to draw them and some not so helpful ways to draw them. Okay. But essentially, you notice here magnesium in its highest energy level has two electrons. And those two electrons are located in the S orbital. So we have them here. Okay? All right? And that's what we draw. So if you ask for the base electron, you simply draw, look at the location, and draw here. Let's look at a periodic... On your periodic table, take a look at um, phosphorus on your periodic table. Everybody there? Look at it. What would be its valence electron, which means the last thing you would write? Three. Three what? Can't you say three? Three what? Oh, you just told number of electrons. Oh, yeah. What's the total? Yeah, what's the total? Yeah. Oh. Three. Three P three. There you go. So how many electrons would you see around a phosphor for a valence? Three. Three dots. You get it? Because it's three P three. You get it? All right? But its group number, okay, is uh, it's 13, 14, it's 15. You get it? Okay, which is different. And so here we just show you the symbols for a bunch of them. And all you do is look at the periodic table, find out what's its last known address. Let's go to uh, bromine. Someone do bromine for me. What's its valence electrons? And you're going to see, because I want to show you this, it's going to show you a little bit of something. I think that's a good example. Mega bromine. You got a 4P5. Now look at bromine. You say, what in the world happened? Right? How many do you see around bromine? Seven. Seven. And you counted what? Five. That's because we have to consider the other two in the S. And we'll show you how to, how to do that. This is also why the mnemonic, I don't want to. You've got it in your head, but it's not something we'd ever teach because it'll fail you on the, when you do Lewis structures. Okay. It'll hurt you. It'll let you get through one thing, but it'll create another hurdle. And so this is just a picture to show you. This we asked you to memorize earlier, right? Metals, non-metals, gases, didn't we ask you? I think so. So that's a repeat. This shows you the trends. We expect you to memorize these trends. And this is uh, a map I created. It's at one of my sites somewhere out there in the world. Kim Tudor now. This shows you all that information we just went over in one slide. So if you can memorize this, it'll help you a lot, particularly like this. It's going to show you where the cations, anions, which you're going to get in the next chapters. Okay. 
you'll know all these, and you'll be able to count the cations and anions by going from left to right, and anions, same thing, going from right to left, and you know them. Break time.